All right, here's a, just a quick overview on setting up some speaker delay towers. And this is actually a suggestion from one of the viewers. There's a few different ways to do it, but uh, we're going to talk about a couple of different ways. All right, delay speakers are used to project sound further from the stage into an audience area. I think everybody's probably seen those at shows. Most commonly are used to provide audio coverage for an area that the main sound system is unable to provide. They're also used to provide an extended coverage of an area where the overall sound cannot be too loud. Basically what this means is if we add more speakers at a lower volume, we can cover a large area without it being too loud. So delay speakers properly set up, they will provide a consistent level of sound over a distance and particularly if you do not use delay on the speakers, the overall mix deteriorates further from the stage. And really, people that are way out in the audience area can tell a difference if you're not using delay speakers properly. All right, so for example, let's just take a look at this. This is like a side view, basic stage. Let's just say we're using ground stack speakers. Okay, let's add in some speakers that we want to use for a delay. So with delay speaker set up properly, the sound will come from the stage first, and then it'll make its way out to like the first set of delay speakers, and then as the sound moves out to the furthest delay speakers, then those last speakers will project sound. But all of this has to be set up using timing. All right, let's take a look at this without using any type of delay. And this is a big problem. So let's get our speaker set out in the audience area. And once again, we're not going to use any delay on it. All right, our distance between front of house and the stage, let's say is about uh, 50 feet. And then from front of house to the first delay tower is going to be about another 50 feet. And then it's going to be another 50 feet, let's say, out to the second delay tower and then beyond. All right, it's important to know that without using delay, the number of feet between the delay towers as well as the stage can present serious problems. So what happens here is that all the speakers fire at the same time. So this big mess of sound is coming from the stage and it's arriving at the listeners at all these different times. The people at the back especially get the brunt of how bad it sounds. So as you can tell, without using a delay system, all the sound is reaching the people furthest in the audience all at different times, which is why it sounds like it's a big echo chamber. It does not sound good. All right, let's see what it can look like when we use delay on a setup. So we're going to take our example here and we're going to add the delay speakers like we did in the last slide. All right, and let's uh, get the distances again so that uh, it gives a better idea of what we're looking at. All right, so when using proper delay in a system, the sound will come from the stage first and it will make its way back to the first delay speakers and then those speakers will fire and then the sound will travel and it's going to hit 
the back delay speakers and the sound is going to travel on further into the audience area. This is the area where it should sound good for the people in the distance. So to set up delay speakers, we need to know the distance between the stage and the first set of speakers and the distance between the first and second set of delay speakers. So the speed of sound is approximately 1100 feet a second or 343 meters a second and that pretty much equates to about one foot or a 0.3 meter per millisecond of time. So if we know how many feet it is between the stage and let's say the first set of delay speakers, we can figure out how many milliseconds of delay that we need. However, the speed of sound is dependent on a few things like uh, air temperature, uh, the humidity, as well as uh, what your uh, altitude is. I believe there are some charts available online that can help you figure out the speed of sound based upon all these dependencies. So using our uh, approximate of one foot per millisecond, let's get something set up here with the delay speakers. So looking at it from the stage to the first set of delay speakers, that is 100 feet. And uh, it is 50 feet between the delay speakers themselves, or 15.2 meters. And as mentioned before, if we know how far it is between the speakers, we know how many milliseconds of delay to use. So when the sound comes from the stage first, 100 milliseconds later, the first delay speakers are going to fire. And then once those fire, the rear delay speakers are going to fire. So setting up delay speakers, they're mostly used for the mid and high frequencies. Bass frequencies can travel much further than mids and highs. As well, setting a delay for subs can be involved due to the larger or the long wavelengths of the bass frequencies. So basically what this means is that the, the bass wavelengths, the lower frequency wavelengths, have to match exactly at the first delay tower. If you are off by a half a wavelength at the delay speakers, you could actually cancel all the bass frequencies from that first delay tower on back. All right, so when daisy chaining the speakers, this is a bad idea. And unfortunately, this is what I've seen people use. This is the wrong way to set up a system unless you have a delay device is set somewhere in line. Without some type of delay set up, this would result in that garbled sound mess that you heard earlier. This is not a good way to set up a system unless you can put inline delay devices. All right, this is not a very good way to set it up, so let's take a look at another way of setting up a delay system. All right, a better way of setting up a delay system is actually using a delay unit. This would be something like a DBX Drive Rack 260 or most any speaker management system should be able to provide you plenty of delay on the outputs. So using a delay unit, we can send the front of house signal to the stage and it won't impact anything on the delay speakers. The front of house sound is just by itself. What we need to do is send a different mixed signal out of front of house into the delay unit. And this could be through a matrix. And once it goes into the delay unit, we can send the outputs to the first set of delay speakers. And we can control the mix that goes to these first delay speakers. And because we know the distance between the stage and the first delay speakers is 100 feet, we can set our delay at 100 milliseconds. Now for the furthest delay speakers, we can use that off of another matrix channel. And we can manage those separately 
than we can the first delay speakers. And because we know that the distance from the stage to the furthest delay speakers is 150 feet, we can set these up for 150 millisecond delay. This type of setup provides you the best control over the entire sound system. The front of house sound has its own mix, the first delay towers has its own mix, and the last delay towers have their own mix. Matrix outputs would be perfect for something like this. And the speaker management system really is the best way to do this. And as I said before, most speaker management systems should be able to provide you plenty of delay on many of the outputs. All right, so to summarize, use only mid and high frequencies on your delay speakers. Try to keep the bass out of them. Do not daisy chain the mid and high signal levels to the delay speakers unless you have some type of inline delay device. The use of a speaker management system is recommended for the delays because it allows you a lot better control over those outputs. Do not mix front of house from a delay speaker location. When mixing front of house, you should never be hearing the delay speakers. It'll cause you problems when mixing. Remember, the speed of sound is dependent on several factors and it will change. So make sure you look up all those factors. And very important, ensure that you have adequate electrical power for the delay speakers whether they're powered speakers or if you are using an amplifier to run some passive speakers, you need to have adequate electrical power. All right, thanks for watching. And as I said, there's a lot to know about it. So hopefully uh, this little short video uh, gave you some insight into setting up a delay speakers.